Hello everyone, welcome to Gent Watches, and today we are doing episode 2 of Ya Boy Kongming. So, last episode was a surprising episode for me, because I didn't know what it was about. I like to go into shows without knowing properly what it's about if I can, and Ya Boy Kongming was no exception. I didn't know what it was about. I knew that it had something to do with music. I thought I knew it had to do with rapping, but it turns out it's actually just it's music and then there's some rapping stuff later apparently um, but I knew that there was a blonde girl in it and uh, that was basically it and I knew the name but now that I've watched it I know that it is a reverse isekai where uh, where your boy Kong Ming <laughs> was a uh, Chinese war general who was um, transported to modern-day Japan Shibuya and met a girl named Aiko who wants to be a singer and he is now trying to support her singing career um, she's a it seems like she's a good singer um, but doesn't have any sort of like X factor about her probably like that's what it seems like is sort of the implication like she doesn't the people are hearing her sing but that she's not standing out particularly so whatever he helps her with I don't know maybe he's gonna help her stand out more somehow or maybe just the maybe it's just the the wrong types of people she's going to right she's got a she's going to clubs with like EDM music and like high you know heart pumping doo, doo, doo. but then she's singing like these you know these high energy songs but she's singing these songs where the singer's actually kind of supposed to get lost in it I think so maybe maybe she needs to go to different venues I don't know I don't know what where they're going with this show but um, but it, it seems like it's first and foremost just a comedy show and the comedy was hitting last episode, uh, especially that one joke where the guy starts ordering a drink and he immediately has a drink ready. Doesn't sound funny on paper, they executed it really well, so <laughs> it, it's made me laugh more than like a joke has in an anime in a while, and so, so I really liked it. Um, so we're going into episode 2 now, I'm hoping this episode we're going to get an OP. Because I've heard good things about the OP, I try not to hear stuff if I can. But I, I couldn't really avoid hearing good things about this OP. Um, but And so I'm excited for it. And I I just am looking forward to whatever this episode has for me. So let's get right into it. I'm stalling for time. No reason for me to stall. Let's just get into it. Here I go. That's say as everyone knows. Because I unfortunately do not know that. Oh, is this the OP? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is like old school old school J-pop? Oh my gosh, look at that dancing. Oh, it's so catchy. Whoa, not what I was expecting. It reminds me of, like, yeah, old DDR music, you know? Does he have anywhere to live? What is your goal? To get followers? general fans voice sell land is that a real festival I don't know much about music festivals <laughs> I like her hair flapping where are you gonna stay you don't have money oh wait you do have money because you have a job now <laughs> this is this is a fun relationship here. Oh, that's interesting. How was it exaggerated? What was different? He has no other clothes, I think. 
Also, she's also wearing the same thing that she was before. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Is it just a fan? You already know what Pinster followers are. I guess he's been doing research. <laughs> I like that she's like a genuine music fan. <laughs> Oh, it's quite the outfit. She also sings in English? Yeah, it's alright. I mean, her dancing's very good. Her dancing is very good, wow. Ooh. He's seeing flaws in their strategies already. Here we go. Oh, who are these guys? Oh, this is better. Whoa. That didn't look like a dance move. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't charm me like Aiko does either. <laughs> I like that he just goes along with this stuff, like he just grabs those glow sticks. This is actually good research for him. He has, he's doing legitimate reconnaissance. <laughs> Are you allowed to do this? <laughs> That's funny. Wow. They are just allowed. Oh, don't, don't tear her down. Oh no, or oh yay? What's happening? Ooh! Okay. Ohohoho. <laughs> <laughs> he just stands out. That's funny. I'm worried. But maybe I have no reason to be. What? Oh. Oh, no. So... Hmm, I'll talk more about this later. <laughs> oh my gosh. Relax, my man. Buddy, be gone, man. <laughs> she finished it already? Yeah. So you have the least chance of getting anyone, yeah. People are just going to be hanging around there to talk, probably. So does she... She wants them to come to her? Yeah. So she's putting purposefully a bad... A bad performer. Oh. Okay. So it is giving Aiko an opportunity, but for the wrong reasons. Hmm, bit of a toxic workplace. Yeah, so it seems like she's not in it for the music at all, she's just in it for the... for the fame. Warp. You got this, Aiko? Oh, 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Did you just count down and then no song started? <laughs> Aww. Aww. こちらで一杯皆さんにおごらせていただきますよ。公明どういうつもりだ。先上さん客は。あ、あれね。皆さんが当てにできるか。所詮人の集まるところに群がる類の人種。なるしょ。こういうのこっちじゃなかったっけ
like he's he he's adapted to this environment very quickly. He's like you know, on the first day he was shocked by all the technology and stuff, but now he's blended in so much and I think it was mostly I think the explanation for it is mostly in that first episode when he just sat there for hours asking her about everything. I guess he's just so curious of a guy, he will keep researching until he has the answers to all the questions that he has. And that's why it was like, that's why it just cut to him going like, and what's the blockchain? So it sounds like he answered, he knows everything up to what a blockchain is in in terms of, which is, that's a, that's a big, uh, that's, a, that's a large amount of technology knowledge, so I think he's good. But it was just funny that he knows to to say to her like, "You should turn your Instagram notifications off." <laughs> um, okay, all right. So that was episode two. Um, so it's it's good. This is this is what I expected the show to be. Is um, was this uh, show of him helping her, you know? improve with strategies and so I said last episode it was an odd pairing um, because normally in a show like this they would have a musician from the past come to the future to help out another musician because they're the ones that have direct knowledge that helps them right um, in and then I and that's why I said it was a weird pairing and it's it's odd that they did that and that's still the case it is still a very weird pairing but they are doing it cleverly because the, clearly the idea is he's using tactics that seem like they can only be applied to wars and battle into something completely unrelated, which is just music stuff. And, I mean, it's a funny first example because it really... <laughs> it doesn't make much sense, right? It's like, it's a very thin premise in <laughs> the one that they were going for, which is that the idea of, okay, you lead this person... Like you, you want, um, you want your comrade to get away. So you tell your comrade to go into an area that's purposefully confusing so that they'll get lost and then they won't be able to find their way out and won't be able to find the people they're looking for. It makes sense, especially for a war. When you do it on a concert venue <laughs> where they actually can't find the exit of the concert venue and they just stick around and, and they're like, well, we're here, we might as well stay here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a really funny concept because it, like, it's a ridiculous enough world that, like, I can believe it, that it happens here. Um, and it's, and it's a sweet sentiment because the idea is that, like, they try, I think the idea is, like, they look for the exit, they're like, huh, it's not here. And then they go somewhere else and they go, oh not here either I came to the bathroom again and then at that point they're just like well the music's actually better here because then they're like they're hearing it whether they want to or not so at that point they'll be like actually this goes better um, so I'm, I'm gonna say stay here so that makes a sort of sense it's just really funny <laughs> it's just a really funny idea that that's what they're going with as their uh, as their big debut war tactic to improve her popularity, um, we got introduced to Mia. I don't know if she's sticking around, but I'm guessing she will be because at the end it seems like she was like, "Keep an eye on her, and you're gonna fix this and all that sort of stuff." So it seems like she might be a running villain in uh, in the show. Um, it's uh, it's interesting because I didn't I didn't love her um, her music. It didn't like didn't jump out at me in any way, and I don't know how to feel about I don't, like I don't know if I don't know if I'm supposed to not love it, you know. Um, I'm not sure what the intention is, because like um, Aiko loves it, she loves the music, so I feel like we should we should appreciate that it's that it's solid, and I guess I do. I appreciate that it's that it's solid music. Um, I think, I think the way that I like when, like, music, anime especially, um, do, like, villains or rivals is when they are legitimately just as good, just in a completely different style, um, or, or better than the, the protagonist, just in a completely different style and normally more experienced. Um, I guess it's kind of different when you're going for this, which is actually more of a villain type character than a lot of music or a music anime and stuff that I've seen seems to go more for the rival approach rather than the, the villain approach um, because 
Because I, I guess they also want to make like those characters as marketable as possible as well, so you don't want to make them villains. But um, I, I compared this to D4DJ last episode, and so I guess I'll say I would do that again here. But like in D4DJ, at least in the anime, um, I guess the rivals, quote unquote rivals, would be Peaky Peaky um, and um, what's their names? Uh, Photon Maiden. And, um, and I know with, like, with those two bands, like, I actually prefer, I think I prefer both Peaky Peaky and Photon Maiden to Happy Around, the protagonist's characters. Uh, like, I actually prefer their music, but I still love Happy Around's music, and the thing is, Happy Around's music, the thing that makes it feel li like you can still root for Happy Around's music and enjoy the rival's music is that Happy Around's music is still, like, is so different to their type of music that you don't even, like, really compare it as much. At least I don't. So I hear, I hear Peaky Peaky's, one of Peaky Peaky's songs, and then I'm like, that was amazing. And then I hear Happy Around's song, which is much more upbeat, you know, Peaky Peaky's more, like, cool and, and, uh, I, I don't know how else to describe it other than cool. Um, and then Happy Around is really upbeat and jumpy and cute. And it's like, you can't, you can't compare them. You just you just can just enjoy both equally and that but still root for happy around because they're the protagonist of the story and we're following their journey um but anyway uh maybe maybe after every episode of of your boy kong ming i'll just talk about d4dj for 20 minutes <laughs> um so yeah mia mia is a interesting villain i want to see where they're taking her character if anywhere at all um but she wasn't. She wasn't the gripping part of this episode. The gripping part of this episode was, was um, Aiko and uh, Kong Ming's relationship and their, uh, and their improvement, and the way that they're strategizing. It seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, OP was good. I was happy with the OP. The OP was really good. It was. It was not what I was expecting, and I like it. I really like it, cause it's like, it's as I said, it's like DDR music, where. Yeah, it, it reminds me of, um, like, it immediately made me think of, like, I, I, I am your little butterfly, that song. Um, and, and that's just, like, old school Asian, like, that was the first, like, Asian song, um, that I had ever been exposed to. Um, I don't need, I, I'm saying Asian because I don't even know, is that a, is that a Japanese song? Is that a Chinese? I, I don't know, actually. Um, but that was a, that was a, a great song back in the day, and it was, uh, it was reminiscent of this OP. I don't know why, it just had that vibe, if, I, I can't articulate why. I'm not good with music, I don't know if you've been able to tell that. I'm not good at articulating different styles of music and all that sort of stuff. I'm, I can, I can tell you about characters, I can't tell you about music very much, but I can tell you what I like, and what I liked is that OP. And the dancing animation was great, because it wasn't like, super upbeat but it was clearly they put a lot of love into those dance animations and it was just it was chill and cute and fun it was great i love it i love it and it was it seemed like a relatively low budget op that they did the most out of you know what i mean where like you can have incredible ops like jujutsu kaisen which have like amazing ops with amazing songs and it's in it's incredibly high budget like it looks um, mind-blowingly amazing. So you can have, you know, that you know that sort of stuff that Mappa puts out. Mappa puts out these high-quality OPs, um, but then you have something like this, which it's relatively simple animation. The, the first part of the the OP was just like cutting between different stills of of Kong Ming, um, and then the dancing was mostly, from what I saw, I've only seen it once, but from what I saw, it was mostly like looped dances, right? But it was still really really good and very memorable so that that's that you don't need a lot of money i think to to make a good op you just need to make something memorable anyway that was uh episode two of your boy kong ming i really liked it i was if i don't i don't know if it's gonna make it into the edit but i'm going to be completely honest in case it does make it into the edit so that i can explain myself i was yawning during the episode i promise that was not because i was bored this show is too fast paced to be bored by by the pacing i think the episode flew by i was yawning because i got about three hours of sleep last night and it is now 
2 a.m. So I hope that makes it understandable. Anyway, thank you for joining me on your boy Kong Ming episode two. Um, if you enjoyed it, best way to let me know is to like the video and to comment down below telling me you enjoyed it, telling me adding to the discussion um, and just, you know, generally commenting what you want down there and subscribe to the channel. Early days of this channel, subscribe is gonna, gonna do a lot. It's gonna go a long way here. So uh, please make sure to subscribe and uh, and support me, you know, support me on my early days. So thank you everyone and I will see you later. Goodbye.